relief. That possible psychological turn, I think, is also something that may play into this in the years ahead. And, and so you might have some ideas on that from the cultural perspective. Yeah, well, I, I was going to say, um, I think Major's 100% correct. I also think that you know, after the election, there was obviously a lot of conversations about you know, fake news and, and uh, sto- false stories spreading. But it's also important to note that there were about 15 million other reasons that Trump voters voted for Donald Trump. <laughs> and so you have this situation where even if there wasn't a single fake news story around, you know, they went to the voting booths, they knew Donald Trump wanted to build a wall, they originally promised to ban all Muslims from coming to the United States. Mm-hmm. Uh, they knew that he you know, didn't release his tax returns. They knew about the Access Hollywood tapes, and they voted for him anyway. So even if you get rid of all the, you know, Hillary Clinton has Parkinson stories and all that, get rid of all of that. You still have two wildly unpopular candidates. And, and for whatever reason, that, there's a 60 million you know, voter block that said, that's my guy. And it has very little to do with fake news and more to do with the fact they just liked him better because of his outsider brashness. So... You know, but it's easy. To, I, I think you know, blaming fake news is one of those. It's an easy thing to do, but I think a lot more voters went to the booth informed, and a lot of people just don't like what they did. And that, and that, and there's a different discussion to be had there. I think. Well, I mean, that would be labeling 